Morning everybody, welcome to Sunday morning. Today we're looking at the Emmaus Road, that wonderful story from Luke 24. Now it's also recorded in Mark chapter 16, but there's only two verses in Mark and very little detail. So we're concentrating on Luke, which is the gospel uh, for today anyway. So in this very brief YouTube talk, I wonder what we can get from this story for these times. Now, this is a journey, it's a, it's a walk, it's from somewhere to somewhere, and Jesus is in this story, is in this journey, is with these two disciples. So what can it say to us as we enter another week in isolation? Well, preachers often look at this story and they look at it from the perspective of Jesus walking alongside people as they journey through life and people being generally oblivious to the presence of Christ on their journey, not even noticing. Cleopas is mentioned in the story, but the other disciple is not. And some preachers would say, because the other disciple isn't mentioned, we don't know whether they're male or female, we can imagine ourselves as that other disciple and read ourselves into the narrative of the story. We can be in the story ourselves. And because this disciple isn't named, it allows us to do just that. Other preachers might look at this story in terms of the destination or the Emmaus Road. Emmaus means warm spring and you could make the connection that they are heading to a place where they will meet the wellspring of life, the living water. So for me today, I want us to try and highlight just a few things that we might want to ponder. And depending on where you're at will depend on what you take from this story. Whenever we read scripture, we can read it with very, very different eyes, with a, with a different kind of perspective. We can have different interpretations, different theologies. And sometimes it depends on what kind of day or week or season we're actually living to what the Lord wants us to take out of this passage. So what I've got from this passage might not necessarily be what you get from this passage. And that is absolutely fine. And that's how it should be, really, because scripture speaks to us where we find ourselves. And although many of us are in the same situation, actually as individuals, we all come to this with a different story and different experiences. So when I read this story, I just made some notes as to what jumped out to me first of all. So the first thing is, they meet him on a road. Yeah. The second thing is, Jesus is a stranger. They are talking to somebody who they don't think they know, somebody who's coming to that experience, coming to that point in their life. They don't know who it is, who he is, but they're happy to have this conversation and they're pouring out their heart to him. They're honest with him, really honest, is a stranger. And yet they're confiding in him. They're telling him the things of their deepest heart. They're, they're telling him things of their deepest concerns. They're, they're telling him how they feel. Even sharing their doubts with him too. All that tragedy, all that loss, all that grief. Their friend has just died. He's been taken from them in one of the cruelest ways ever. And they are at a complete and utter loss. And Jesus, being the stranger on this road, with these two people, listens. And for me, that really, really, really stuck out. He's there, he's taking it all in, what they're saying to him. And you can imagine how it's going, can't you? You can imagine him almost in the middle of these two disciples. And they're there just giving him everything that's on their heart. And Jesus, being Jesus, is listening. He lets them tell him about all their anxieties. He lets them grieve. He lets them mourn. He listens to it all. And, you know, it's far, far easier 
to have doubts about yourself and doubts about faith and, and what you believe and what you don't believe when you're in distress when you're in pain when you're grieving the loss of somebody that you love and you believe they died well before their time actually it's at those times we have the biggest doubts when everything's going fine and everything's great not so much and yet throughout this and during this time of doubt Jesus is, is talking to them and is taking them not from Jerusalem to Emmaus but from grief and loss into his presence and into his peace and with his presence and his peace we have that reassurance which comes when he breaks the bread later in the story. So in loads of ways this story can show us that when we're experiencing our really dark times and our mourning times and our sadness that Jesus is, is that compassionate friend who is there walking alongside and listening. Now it says in the scriptures that something happened to their heart, they had a burning in their heart so we get a sensation something's happening that they can feel but they can't put the finger on it and it's only later they say to each other you know weren't our hearts strangely warmed it isn't the sensation that reveals jesus to them jesus opens the scriptures to them as well in this story and in fact many commentaries believe jesus is rebuking them is is telling them off because of their doubts in other words, how foolish you are. But I, I don't read it like that at all. I think he's kind of saying how foolish you are. In a sense, being compassionate, being loving, being, being that understanding, that caring friend. I don't think he's rebuking and shouting at them because they want to spend the night together. They want to invite him to share food and hospitality. I'm not sure they would have done that if he'd shouted at them. And I don't think that is actually what was going on. How foolish you are, don't be silly. That is very, very different to a how foolish you are. I wonder how you've heard it read in churches or maybe how you've read it yourself. I believe that because the two disciples wanted to carry on that conversation, because Jesus had opened the scriptures, I mean can you imagine Jesus, you know, the best Bible scholar we'll ever have, opening the scriptures to them. But it wasn't the sensation, the burning of the heart. It wasn't the opening of the scriptures. It was neither of those things, actually, that brought that realisation as to who they were talking to. That comes later in the sharing. It comes in the conversation around the table while they're preparing to eat. Sensation, scripture, sharing. Those three things together make a profound difference on these two friends. But it's the recognition that occurs in the meal. What a wonderful, beautiful reference to Holy Communion. He is known to us in the breaking of the bread. They saw, he disappeared. He disappeared, but he was not gone. What remained was the recognition in the bread. Now they immediately got up, probably didn't finish the tea off, got up and went back to Jerusalem because they had confirmation, they had got full reassurance, assurance of the hope and the salvation that is found only in Jesus Christ. Because of the sensation, the scriptures and the sharing. Now, how do I end this? Because for me, these things are just all, I suppose, bubbling round in my head. But I think for me, the, the most important thing and what I'm going to take into this week is that he heard the cries of their hearts on that road. They didn't know who he was. He was a, a complete stranger to them. And yet he just listened. He, he heard 
every single doubt. He heard all the, no doubt, accusations of unfairness. He heard the disappointments. He heard their pain and he heard their grief. And he brought them back into a place of trust, a place of peace, a place where he was with full recognition. Now, we aren't breaking bread in our churches at the moment. Um, but we know that we have the presence of Christ with us. And I believe, you know, there, there are so many people at the moment that just are, are needing to pour out their hearts, pour out the experiences that they're going through, the tragedies that they're going through. And I believe Jesus is hearing all of those cries. And it might be that for many people, they don't realise that Jesus is there with them on that road, hearing those cries, hearing those conversations, the why, why me, or why them, or why us conversations. But it all happened at the very start of that process. Now our sensations are real. Our scriptures are real, they are true, they are sacred, and our sharing is as well. So it might be that you find people wanting to share with you their experiences during this time. And as you listen and be the Christ figure for them, may you know and have the confidence that Jesus is listening as well. So I don't know what you're going to take from all of this, um, but... Let's ponder it and see what the Lord is wanting to reveal to us as we move forward into another strange week. So God bless everybody. Take care. Bye bye.